I'm nice. I wasn't even close to the speaker then. I was getting close to the speaker. Oh, there we go. That's plenty of uh, volume. Good to see y'all today. How's everybody doing? Y'all want to be out fishing? No. Going to the lake? No. Are you are y'all worried about this is still February and it's doing this weather? It makes me a little nervous for all the trees that are blooming. Not sure what's gonna to happen to them, but we'll just keep praying. I don't think Gary said to plant yet. Do not plant tomatoes yet. Wednesday's highs in the 40s. But my wife told me Tuesday morning it's gonna be 70. That's crazy. Okay. Just as long as it doesn't freeze. Hey, let me give you a couple of announcements or maybe a couple of additions. So if you've got your little uh, information sheet, let me remind you. Today is very busy uh, for a variety of things going on. Um, one, if you'd like to help us with the Tidwell Nursing Home, that's at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I appreciate a couple. Who did come out last week? Connor came out with me last week and we sang. And so we've got Tidwell service again. If you remember, we were filling in. Uh, I swapped times with uh, with uh, Bowers, and so we did last week at Tidwell. So we're going to be at Tidwell again. And Miss June did a good job of playing uh, with the songs. And so if you want to come join us, two o'clock at Tidwell Nursing Home, and that's uh, singing three or four songs, and then a short devotion, and getting to go around and shake some hands and visit with some of our uh, patients. One of ours was in the. Uh, was in at the hospital, so I'm not sure if Carol Donnelly is back or not. I noticed that she was not there last week, so we'll check on her as well. Um, as you look through the list, then uh, after the Tidwell Nursing Home at three at four o'clock, uh, personnel committee, you've got a meeting, preschool, children, youth meeting at five, as well as finance, and that's all leading up to our business meeting, our monthly business meeting at six o'clock. You'll see that on the schedule. Uh, for stuff going on. Of course, Wednesday night, same uh, activities. Uh, next next Sunday, just a, a heads up, we're getting ready for our, uh, our summer things. Uh, one of those is Vacation Bible School. So we'll have our first BBS kind of uh, meeting with looking at the dates and the material, the curriculum. If you want to be involved with Vacation Bible School, that can be the range of, of cooking, playing games, crafts, uh, uh, being uh, someone that helps in, with the, the students, the groups of students and the children. So if that's next Sunday, not today, but next Sunday. We'll put that in the bulletin for you. So I remind you, but that's for next week, BBS and uh, Miss Rhonda is gonna be our lead on that. So you can talk to Rhonda Gillespie for more information. Um, the other events are still on there for you. I think those are still the same and added that. So I think we're good to go. Hey, did you see Wednesday night? It was crazy. Wednesday night, we had 104 people here uh, between the, the different activities. We had, I think it was three uh, children saved in addition with three or four more that have been saved and have not been baptized, and they spoke. So we've got several baptisms uh, and salvations that have heard, occurred over the last, uh, in the month of February. I think it's right, six or seven. And this Wednesday night, I believe three of the children will be getting baptized. Uh, let me remind this of all of us that are here on Wednesday night. At 7.20, at 7.20, we'll be doing the baptism. So everybody that's in the building will gather back in here to uh, to visit and, or to gather and to watch the baptisms of the uh, of the kids. And so remind us. So schedule will be a little bit abbreviated on Wednesday. And... Uh, Teachers in the children, youth, and preschool, we'll talk about how that works uh, at our meeting this afternoon. All right, it's good to see y'all ready to sing. Let's praise the Lord. Yeah. Good morning, church. I tell you what, I don't know if y'all recognize, but I hope you do. God is moving in this church. Uh, throughout our younger group, I want to express my appreciation, certainly, for the teachers that's uh, uh, teaching these classes. You can see a spiritual movement within our, our young people. 
I don't know if you noticed, but we got two of them up here today, Edna and Natalie, that's wanted to sing with us. They're expressing an idea. Yeah, give them a hand. They're certainly worthy of more kiddos that's wanting to sing, but God is moving in those young lives, and it, it's due to teachers nurturing them in the right way, but it should also be from a church family that mentors like we should. So we encourage them. Give them encouragement as you as they choose to do things like as they choose to have Jesus in their life because it blesses all of us. Y'all stand, let's sing. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you at this time that we have an opportunity to give back to you. Help, help us to realize that it all comes from you anyway, and we give generously to you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, 
Seemed like an afternoon of everything. And uh, so uh, we went to the baseball game. You know, at the baseball game, it's not like it used to be. Um, that every batter, you know, when our players get up, every batter, they have this little walk up tune. I have no idea what some of those songs were from. Every now and then, some of the people in the stands would start singing. I look, or, or you're doing it, and I'd see people that were adult parents of these kids, and they were singing these songs. I'm like, I have no clue where these songs come from. But uh, I know when we come into here, I hope that you know where these songs come from and what they're about. Now, every now and then we'll throw in a song that you're like, I haven't heard that one. Sometimes it's a new one. You know, it's, it's fun to watch the worship team on when they're getting ready for Sunday. They do that every Wednesday about five o'clock. You've been praying for them. You may come by there and hear them. And it and, uh, and, and always comes in. They're, they're trying to figure out some kind of song to go with the message. You know, and I try to give them... Uh, some stuff to, to go from, whether it be the scripture or the title or the theme, whatever. And so they're all doing, it's fun to watch because Gary Gary and Sharon are kind of, Gary, I think, I don't know, maybe it's Gary and Sharon, they're kind of in charge of finding the hymns. Can I say that? That's usually, that's what that's how it works out. And so they, they can find, so if you're ever, 
If you're if you're ever wanting to say, well, how can we haven't sung that song? Just blame Gary and Sharon, okay? Amen. <laughs> but they're they remember though they're trying to tie it in with the uh, the sermon, so we're all together. So on a Sunday, we're all together uh, in the Word of God and what He's wanting us to to know. So. Um, it, it's good over a year period. We usually try to cover most of the hymns, most of the songs, but always we want to glorify Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? And so as we come here today, last week we started this kind of a six-week series looking at, and, and in our 40 days uh, before Easter, uh, we, we, we talked about who is Jesus. Remember? And so I asked you just to, to, to just for a moment, tell someone next to you, who is Jesus? Now, I... I don't even remember last week, but I said, now you, you, you did your go-to, who is Jesus to you, and you said that last week. So I want to stretch you, and hopefully you're sitting next to the same people. And so you're going to have like 15 seconds, we did this last week, to tell someone who is Jesus to you. What are, what are you going to say? And if you say the same thing as last week, they're going to say, they're going to say to you, tell me something more. <laughs> Can you do that? Can you do that? If they start that, you just say, tell me something more about Jesus, all right? So you've got someone next to you somewhere, or someone in front of you, or someone behind you, however you need to do it, 15 seconds, go. Who is Jesus? 15 seconds. Who is Jesus? Do I hear you tell something more? Tell them something more. 15 seconds. Okay, how about 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Yeah, you, yeah, you've still got three seconds. Tell them something more. Three, two, one. All right, who is, who is Jesus to you? I, I, y'all, y'all did a good job. I want y'all to keep practicing that. So that way, it becomes a, kind of something you're learning as you're studying in the Bible in a Sunday school class, maybe uh, in one of the songs and maybe one of those phrases about Jesus. That, oh, I need to learn more about Jesus because I just heard something I hadn't really maybe thought about or, or, or studied uh, uh, more about. So, so when you think about who is Jesus and, in, and it is something that the Holy Spirit uh, pricks your heart about, you know, speaks to your heart about, you, you want to go into your study and to the scripture. And it's so easy these days if you've got one of those Bible apps where you can just search all sorts of ways about Jesus in the Old Testament, New Testament, and one of the books, a specific book if you're studying. Uh, and so you can find things. Who is Jesus? And, and, and how does he speak to your heart? Because as you practice it here, you just practice it. That's you, you just practiced. You were on this you were put on the spot to say something about Jesus. Now, I guess I should have said, now, if this is your first time here uh, and we do that, just listen up, okay? And I hope I didn't have to put you on the spot. But if you did, that's great. Uh, and, and we want everybody to say, when we come in here, we're, we're all about who is God to us? How has he revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ? And what is he calling us to do? Last week, we talked about who is Jesus. And we, we said he is the one to follow. Remember, we talked about he is the one to follow. And we talked about a little bit of that scripture that talked about we are, if we want to follow Jesus, we've got to take up our, deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. That's why that cross is is up there. It's not standing straight up like the one in the baptistry. It's just the one to remind us that we are called to pick up our cross, you know, deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus. So we're supposed to, now, so, so let's think about this. So what's the next step? So now we're all following Jesus. Maybe you, you, uh, God uh, spoke in your life. Maybe the Holy Spirit, um, um, convicted you. Maybe you're getting off the path of following Jesus last week in some way, some manner. And so God's calling you back to stay on the path to following in Jesus' path and his way for your life. And so maybe that's going on last week. And said, so thank you, Lord, for showing me. Maybe is is keeping you on the path. Maybe it was staying on the path and it's a challenging, maybe it's a challenging hill, a, a challenging road, a, a, a crowd you were getting ready to go through that God was asking you to be ready because someone may say to you, who is Jesus? And if you keep practicing this, we're going to do this for five, you know, for four or five more weeks, and we may do it again sometime. But this is getting us ready on the spot and not just with our standard, here's who Jesus. Now, I know there's some very specific things that we all want to be in combat. Who is Jesus? What did he do for us? Uh, and how can we trust him? So those things, but maybe 
depends on the group you're talking with or you're, you're witnessing to, God's going to give you some extra things that will be pertinent to that hearer that you're talking to about Jesus. So you're following Jesus. Can you imagine what it must have been like as they were following those early disciples, those, those uh, the apostles, the 12, and, and some other people came along. Can you imagine what it was like for them as they were following Jesus, uh, the son of a carpenter, uh, one that they knew they were following him because they said, we think, we think he's the Messiah. We're, we found him. We think we found the Messiah. What's that mean for us? What an exciting time to be alive for them. Say, we finally get to see the Messiah. What does all that mean in following Jesus? And so Jesus then, we, we, we hear him calling them to follow him. But then we also hear him speaking the truth. And we'll get into that some, later on in, these, in this series of sermons. But for today, Jesus is the one to do what he says. He is the one to do what he says. Why? Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, we, got to, we got to go outside uh, yesterday afternoon, and, and we went out to Robber's Cave. That's one of our favorite places to go and do some running and jogging and everything. And, and we took the whole herd. The whole, well, we did, did we, no, we did not take, we did not take a special one. Uh, she stayed behind with her dad and had some special uh, daughter, dad time. Actually, the dad was busy working too. But we took the two boys and me and Teresa and Christy and we went out there and Paul, little Paul was on a, on a bicycle and I was pushing Sam. I drew the short straw. And so I was pushing Sam. I chose to do it. I need some extra, I need some training and so we were going down and y'all know when you when you pull into robber's cave where the lookout restaurant is and and uh, the carlton and all that well we decided to go to the left so we parked the car and we went downhill all the way down to deep four y'all know that spot okay it's all downhill well sort of it's all downhill now it's all back uphill uh so and i got him both ways but i started so i got loosened up now paul was on a bicycle and we went that way because we won't be as busy going that way as going to Robert's Cave. Because Paul doesn't, he rides his bike great, but he's all over the place. And, and he was doing really good because he was between me, because I was the tail end of the whole herd. Tracy was, and Christy was, and I was, you, you got that? And so we had, we had this, we had this constant, someone was telling Paul, scoot over, get over on this side of the road. And I was watching the whole thing. I'm sitting there pushing Samuel, and Samuel's squirm, squirm around. That made the whole stroller hard to do. And I'm trying to push it downhill and doing all that. And I'm actually trying to move and doing all that stuff. And I can see Paul going there. And there was cars coming. And one time, Christy and, and, and Teresa were on one side of the road. And they're yelling for Paul to go over here. And then they would get over because of the car and said, no, you go this way. And you could just see the, it was like so much confusion because you got grandma, you got mom, and you've got Paul who's in charge of himself on a bicycle and he's wanting to ride everywhere. And you've got this car doing this. And I thought, this is crazy. Who do you follow? Whose instructions do you follow on that road that's two lane? And it's, it's okay two lane up and down there by Robert. So next time you go down there thinking about that. And next time you're going up and down there and you see people walking, just run them over. <laughs> just kidding. Don't run them over. Don't run them over. But Paul was just, I think Paul at one time was going to take on one of the cars. He was just. Because he was, he had a head of steam going, and he's going. I'm supposed to be here. He says, "I'm a bicycle. I'm supposed to be on the right side of the road. My mom and my grand and my grandma are are pedestrians. They're supposed to be on this side going to get you. You know, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Bicycles go with traffic. Pedestrians go against traffic. Unless you're in a 5K and there are all people running and they all do whatever they want to anyway." And so this is all that's going on. Who do you follow? Who do you listen to? So you're a little five-year-old boy on a bicycle that's having a blast in a park ground that's supposed to be for kids, that kind of thing. Who is he supposed to listen to? Grandma? Mom. And they can't decide which side of the road they're going to be on sometimes. 
And the car, the truck, the car, the, the cars and trucks that were coming at first, I thought, we're, I'm going to, it's just going to be me and Sam. They're all going to be wiped out. Because there's about four or five cars coming right when we took off down through there. Who do you listen to? Who oh, really? Who are you listening to? Maybe your life isn't quite like that, but it probably is. And you're living your life. In addition, you have your bosses, employers, you have uh, your doctors and your, your uh, whoever else that's involved in your life with authority in your life. You're going, who am I supposed to listen to? In the doctor's office to the doctor. At home to your spouse. You know, you listen to, you know, we always say we're supposed to listen to Jesus, right? We're supposed to listen to Jesus. But in our day and age, who do people listen to? Is it the crowd? Is it the culture of the day? Is it the, the, what, the, what is currently what we're supposed to do and everybody's going to stay in the norm? Maybe that's just our day that's having this problem. Do you think that Jesus and his disciples had any problem with following after Jesus? And yet throughout these scriptures that we read, Jesus is dialoguing with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, with the rulers, with, uh, with, with what the word, the people's interpretation of the word said to do and what he said to do. I would say to you today, the same as what's true then, we need to understand that Jesus, who is Jesus? He is the one to do what he says. Amen. Paul was probably going at that time, God, what am I supposed to do? I don't think a little five-year-old boy thinks about that when he's on his bicycle. But do you ever come to that spot? Maybe you're not the five-year-old boy. Maybe you're the 64-year-old man. Maybe you're the 35-year-old young lady. Maybe you are your age, your situation, going, I just wish Jesus would tell me what I'm supposed to do. And I would say to you, even if Jesus told you what to do, you would probably not do what Jesus says to do. Isn't that true? No, Brother Paul, 80% of the time I do what Jesus says. Is that good enough? That's, that's a B. Well, maybe 80, whatever the B is now, 83, 84, uh, 93. 93% of the time I do what Jesus says to do. And what, what would I say to you as a pastor saying to you, preacher of the gospel, I would say to you what? 93% of the time is what? Not good enough. So we need to look at as we whisper to our friends and to the to, to uh, people coming through, here's what I do know, is I need to do what Jesus says to do. I need to. I must. I should. And yet I fail, and I ask his forgiveness, and I can keep connected to the word so I can know what he wants me to do. So here's a very familiar story. It's at the, in, in, the, in the book of Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, you know chapters 5, 6, and 7 is a, is a gathering of what's called the Sermon on the Mount. And at the very end, after Jesus has said all these things of teachings, and he would say to him, here's what you've been told to do, but here's what I say. Notice, if you read in there, that is totally different than what has ever been done with the Word of God from anybody else that's written the scriptures because all these other prophets and leaders said, here's what God said to do. Jesus declares when he says, here's what I say, that is declaring that he is God. He is saying it. In fact, that's what's going to be said here. Uh, have you found Matthew 7, verse 24? And let's read this together. And let's think about what um, you're not necessarily in robber's cave on a path with a lot of family, but you're saying, okay, Lord, in the crowd and the, the, the communication that's going on and all the talking going on in my life, what are you wanting me to hear from you and what to do? So Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 24, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine 
and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. But, verse 26, everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man. Jesus says, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house and it collapsed and its collapse was great. When Jesus had finished this sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, the crowds were astonished at his teaching because he was teaching them like one who had authority and not like their scribes who taught based on interpretation. Jesus was giving the authority of his word. So when we think about who is Jesus, he is the one to do what he says. Now, as you've read this, and many, how many of you have heard this passage before? Come on, come on. If we have not taught this in the preschool, we should. If the children the same, this is such a, a common teaching. And so we need to, and, and you need to read all of the Sermon on the Mount to see what Jesus taught um, and brought to us. But Jesus is telling us, and we need to hear that people are going to hear him. You've heard the words of Jesus, right? So, you know, we, we talk about this joking I saw on Facebook on, oh, a few months ago. And, but we, we all said, well, I wish I could have been with the disciples and I could have heard the words of Jesus. And what do we do? What would we say to that person? Here's what you should say. Well, just a second. I'll help you hear the words of Jesus. And you're going to pull out your Bible. But most of you aren't going to carry your Bible around. I don't see you carrying your Bible in Roy's. I don't see you walking around with your eyes. So, so, but almost one thing I can pretty much be sure of is that you're carrying your phone with you. You got your phone with you? Everybody's got it. Everybody has it. Some of you have been on it all the whole time. Right? Some of you are playing a game. Don't show me what you're playing right now. And so you've got your mind. Almost all of you have this. Some of you say, yeah, and I've, I've, Brother Paul, I just confess, I was just checking Facebook. Or Brother Paul, you know, kind of like me, I just checking to see if our government still exists. So I'm going to go on my fo lo local news and see if we still have a government called the United States. Or some of you say, well, I just checked my finances. And uh, so far, I've still got my money in the bank. So you, we got all that. If you have all those things, if you've got all those apps, and probably you've got, some of you have got like 5,000 apps. I get so nervous about how many apps. I, it's, the good thing is to make it heavier. But I, I look, if you don't have the Bible app on there, you've got to get that on there. You've got to get a Bible app on there so that the next time someone says to you, well, I would probably do what you're saying if I could just hear Jesus speak, and you would just pick it out, find your favorite verse where Jesus is speaking, and you would what do with it right then? You would read the words of Jesus out loud to that person. This is what Jesus says. Do you hear that? I understand. We we said all of the all of the Bible is God's word. The whole Bible was inspired by the by God through the work of the Holy Spirit in the hearts and lives of those men that were moved to write these things down. And so we know this is entirely the word of God. And we could hear what God said, whether it be to Moses or whether he said to, to Daniel or to Elijah or to any of the Old Testament, to us in the New Testament through Jesus Christ, through the Apostle Paul, through the Apostle John or Matthew or, or Mark or Peter. And we could read some of those and we could read those words of God but here Jesus is saying to those disciples and saying to those hearers, listen to what I have to say. That, that's a beginning point because a lot of times we're not even listening to Jesus. So we're following. We, we say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deny myself. I'm going to take up my cross. You know, whatever your cross looks like, however big it may be, whatever fits you. You know, whatever size it needs to be for you, whether you're a kid or a full grown uh buff, working out all the time person, or whether you're fragile and old like some of us are getting to. And so you just say, you know, there's a big old cross. I told you, like, there's a huge one back there in that, that red building back behind us. I just didn't get it. I wasn't sure if I could bring it by myself back in here. You know, 10, almost 11 years ago, 
I'd have gone and got that one brought back here. You know, I'm 64 now. I was 53 then. I'm thinking, man, I'm getting older. I just said, you know, I don't have to impress anybody. Not that that impressed anybody. It probably impressed myself. <laughs> I think I'll just stick with this one. And so you could probably go in, if we had a building full of crosses, you could go in there and find a cross that, that you would be willing to deny yourself and take up, okay? But are you willing to keep listening to Jesus? Whether you be a kid on a bike, just having a good time on a road in the park, or having some very big struggles and uncertainties, I promise you the best thing for your life is for you to listen to what Jesus has to say, to search in the word of God for what he's wanting you to hear. And Jesus says the same things happen to everybody. The picture there is two houses. I, I, I couldn't build a house quickly over, over this week. In fact, I, I forgot to do it this week, so I had to do it this morning. So I think I still got some sand uh, I want to say thanks to Jennifer. I got by with my wife, didn't see it. Uh, and so Jennifer saw when I was coming. You got something on here. So, oh, yeah, it's this bag of sand I picked up at the house. This is my play sand. And it was in a spot to, to help some flooding to a little pond I'm building. And play sand. Why is it in the bag? Why is the play sand in the bag? Because if it wasn't this in the bag... Uh, Connor and everybody else that wants to keep everything clean say, oh great, he's bringing something else on the stage, it's going to be a mess and i got to clean up. The good thing is this bag, I think it only has a little bitty hole in one spot, I can't remember where it was. So it's probably just a little trail of sand somewhere through here. But this place in Jesus said same storms are going to happen to both people, all people. Same storms. Similar idea. Floods and storms and wind and all things happen to all of us, both in this church and out. Because you walk into this building, because you follow Jesus Christ, does not mean that you're not going to go through a tornado or an earthquake or drought or loss of a job or loss of family members. We all are going to suffer the same kinds of things. But what Jesus says, there's something that's different when you don't just listen, but you act on them. You act on them. You don't just practice with them, but your life is built on them. I do love this rock, because this rock, that bag of sand was heavy, but this is nice. I can move it around. And, you know, I'm not sure that Jesus meant that you can pick up a rock and be moving on, but I just like the picture that I can put my life on the rock. We even sang somewhere one of these songs, and said, oh, I like it. And it says we will stand on whatever, and stand on but, but the thing about this, I wish thing, this was on rollers so we could move. So when we live our life in motion, we don't just run back to the secure spot and stand there. It's not like, what do we call it when we're kids? Home base, you know, tag your aunt, but this is my base, my tree that was safe. Where was, this is not, this, please don't think that you just run back to Jesus and then you leave Jesus behind and you go out here and do all your own thing. And then when things get bad, you come running back and you stand on the rock. And Jesus says, my words are going to stick in you and you're going to act on them wherever you are. It's not that you have a home spot. It's not 11 o'clock on Sunday morning uh, when you gather with your, your friends and, and, and brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a great spot to be, but that is not your home base because most of your life is not spent from 11 to 12, one day a week following Jesus Christ. All the days, all the hours, every minute. When your phone goes off in the middle of the night, and you're going, I don't want to answer this because it can't be good to answer this call from a loved one at this weird time. There's something not right. And so wherever it may be, you know you're going to act upon the words of God that he's given you through Jesus Christ, through the teachings of the scriptures, and you're going to act on them because when the storms come, when the floods start rising up and when you face the end of life, you know that you are secure in the very, very person of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? It is in his words that I act upon. I act out of that, that storehouse 
of words that he's planted in my life. And so that's why I continue to study his word. That's why I keep coming back to my brothers and sisters in Christ to worship with, the, with, with them the Lord Jesus Christ, to gather in a small group, to do acts of service, that I do all these things because I am acting out, acting upon. I am not just standing secure in one spot and then getting to be whatever I want to be outside of that place. We are called to not just follow Jesus, not just listen to Jesus, but we are called to act upon the words of Jesus. In fact, Jesus says, there are people that will listen to my words. They'll hear my words, but they will not be secure. They'll be like the person, the man that has built their life on sand. If you've heard from Jesus, but you're not acting upon what Jesus has called you to do, your whole life experience is up in the air and may be washed away. A lot of people hear the good news of Jesus Christ, but just hearing the good news does not produce salvation. Know this. Just because you've been in church on a regular basis and you've sung some songs, if you've never acted upon what Jesus Christ has done for you, if you've never given him first place in your life, if you've not said, yes, Jesus, I will follow you the rest of my life and I'll act upon the words that you put in your scriptures for me to, to live out on, then your life is in jeopardy. The only person that's secure is a person that has put their life in the very life and person of Jesus Christ. You've heard his words and you're acting out upon those words. You're going to deny yourself. You're going to take up your cross. You're going to follow him. Sand is so much easier to build upon. You can just spread it all out. You can smooth it off. You can sweep it. You can make it really nice and smooth. And you can build a lot of stuff on there. The first flood, first storm, will just blow away. But when you put your life in Jesus Christ, then you're secure. Little Paul had his mom, his grandma. I was so far behind him, I don't think he could have heard me. But I was yelling at him, get out of the road, scoot over to the right. I wanted to say to all three of them, Y'all pick one side of the road and stay on it. But we were having just a blast. And they, after a while, after a while, they got so far out of me, Samuel looked around at me. He said, Mommy, Mommy. I said, she's up there somewhere. We'll catch them. I, I just say to you, you lose track of people. People lose track of you. But there's one person that you should never lose track of. And you should always listen to. You've got to listen to Jesus because he knows you, he loves you. He promised in his word that he would always be with you. When you've given him your life, he will not abandon you. Life may be tough, but Jesus is right there with you. So who is Jesus? He's the one I wanna follow. Who is Jesus? He's the one I want to do what he says. Right? Amen. He is. And this world is getting more and more confusing. We're going to read more about this in the, when we start our study in Romans at the 1st of April. And we're going to start with a very difficult um, chapter that specifically and correctly address the culture we're in today. We've got to stick to the scriptures about how we uh, live our life and who we are. Our identity is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our identity is in Christ. And Jesus Christ is the one that created you and he has given you the opportunity to have eternal life by trusting in him. And he says, come to me. He said to them, come follow me. And today, 
Are you acting upon the words of Jesus on a regular, daily basis? Do you, do you seek out his will and his words for you? The more you're in his scripture, the more you'll be sensitive and in tune with what you should be doing and what you should be not doing. Not just those things, but how you relate to people as well. So where are you today? Who are you listening to? Who is the one that will give you the life words you need? Jesus Christ. Are you acting on what he's asked you, shown you, and called you to do? Are you? Let's pray together. Fathers, we come before you right now in this moment of decision. Father, there are some that need to put their, their life, their faith in Jesus Christ. They realize that they have heard about Jesus, but they've never said yes to him. And today they need to act upon those words and come and ask Jesus to save them. Father, there are believers here that say, I'm, I'm hearing Jesus. I'm following him, but there's some areas that I just heard, but I'm, I'm being disobedient. I'm not doing, I'm not trusting him. So he's saying, Father, trusting in Jesus. So Lord, now, Speak to your people, call them in what you are asking them to do and let them come and trust and act upon what Jesus is calling them to do. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen. You come right now as we stand to sing, you come to Jesus. He loves you and how much you can trust, put your trust in what he's asking you to do. The Holy Spirit's convicting you, calling you to do some things. May, may God bless you. I, I just want to give you a little update on our, our plan to uh, send a team out to New Mexico. And we had our first meeting last week. Looks like we'll have, a, we may be having 20 or 22 people from our church going out there. Uh, so I, 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 the guy from out there, the state represent Paul B this week and and he wanted to give me an update. They're having a meeting March 14th with this church where we'll be staying at. And they're really struggling right now. They're really struggling about what they need to do. And so he says, we're we're brief. What is the purpose of the church? Why do they exist? And what are they called to do? And when he told us that this group is coming, they may have 15, they're like, there's 15 people that want to come help us? Want to come alongside us? And he said, yes. They may want to do this more than just one time. And when I told him, he said, it looks like we have 20. He said, 20? I said, I think it's 20, maybe 22. And he was just going, wow, 
uh, what do we need to do? And he's so excited. So their meeting on the 14th, we're going to have a Zoom meeting sometime in April to where we can visit with them because we can't just get there. You know, it's like 12 hours away. So it's an exciting thing for uh, our church because, you know, we're just a small church ourselves. We're not huge. You know, it's not a church of 1,800 that's sending out groups all over the world. We're just saying, God, what do you want us to do? And how can we help them? And that's where they are. What do they want to do? And so we're just going to say, Lord, what's your next step for us and for them? And that's what we all practice. It's not you falling in line with what everybody else is doing. It's right here, Lord. This week, this hour, Jesus, I love you. I know you've told me these things. How do I act on it in this moment? May the Lord give you an amazing testimony of what you do this week in Jesus. After the storm, after the flood, after the wind, the guy that was on the rock said, I'm sure glad I did what Jesus said I should do. Because we're still alive and we've still got more things to do. We are still alive and we've still got more things to do for the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you with that and give you hope for the future. And when you turn on your phone and you look at the news and you look at your bank accounts and you look at all this other stuff, Turn first to the word and let that be your guide to understand the rest. Okay? God bless y'all. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we pray. Um, man, it's good to see you, Candy. So glad that you're here today. We continue to pray for you. She told me that she's uh, done with the radiation and just working on the, the chemo now. So we're continuing to pray for you and God bless you. And, and she said, uh, Josh broke me out of of my uh, spot, and so we're so glad he did that you could be here to worship the Lord with us. God bless you, and we'll keep praying for you. And um, um, as we pray, Lori, could, would you would you pray for us as we close, Lori Holston? Thank you.